I have an alcohol ink video to share with you today. I'm working on white craft plastic and I'm using some inks that I just picked up the other day. So I'm actually just playing with them to see what the colors do and end up making a panel that I turn into a card. So I'm working with three Ranger inks and one pinata, the lime green. I'm finishing off my dots here with Glacier alcohol ink from Ranger. And then I'm moving the inks around with isopropyl alcohol. I usually use 99% if I can find it. I think this one's 91%, but you want a high percentage rather than the 70%. Basically, I'm just playing to see um, how strong the colors are. I've noticed in all my working with alcohol inks that some colors are really quite strong and they take over the panel. Like there are a few really deep purples and dark blues that tend to do that. So in this process of just making patterns and moving colors around, I do learn a bit about these four inks. This footage is sped up, so even though the inks are moving slowly in actual, in real life, they were moving even more slowly than that. And you have to be aware of that when you're working with alcohol inks, you might get to a point where you love the pattern only to find that it continues to move and evolve while it dries. So keep that in mind. I decided to just keep on playing with these inks and moving them around with the help of the rubbing alcohol and then turn it into a pattern with an air blower. The air blower that I'm using to do this is the older one. Um, there is a newer one which I think blows out a bit more air. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this one so I'm continuing to use it but any air blower will do. And you can see as I work that I push the liquids, the ink and alcohol from one side and then I kind of move my panel and move it, uh, push it with the air from the other side and I end up getting edges and kind of waves and uh, different depth of color by doing this. It's one of my favorite techniques to just work from one side and then the other basically drying the alcohol ink as I go. So when I finished blowing this ink and drying it, I had a panel that I could have turned into a card just like that. It was kind of cool with those shapes and, and light airy colors, but I decided let's always try to do something totally different. And you can see that you can work over the top of inks you already have. I decided to dilute it all again with rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and drop a mask on top of it. This is a technique that Ardeth Percy Robb has recently been showing on her YouTube videos and I've been inspired to try it myself. I've tried it with a couple of different stencils and um, decided to make a video, but I will link to Ardeth's videos in the description box below. Once I drop the stencil on top, the alcohol inks kind of started um, gravitating towards the stencil themselves. So then I just started drying the ink without moving the stencil. So what happens is I dry the ink in the exposed areas, but the air actually pu pushes ink from underneath the stencil out into those exposed areas as well. So I'm getting little lines and little kind of I'd call them watermark, but they're not water, just edges from where it's drying. And you can see I just pushed the stencil there and tried to get it back into the same place because the alcohol ink is nowhere near dry yet. If you look at the stencil, you can see that there are a few places where it appears to be white under the stencil, but there are a lot of places uh, that 
they look a bit gray that's where the ink is still sitting underneath so as I continue to just dry this from all angles I'm pushing that ink out from under the stencil and it is drying in the exposed spaces. When I think it's just about all dry, I take a little peek underneath only to see some little bubbles of ink still moving around. So I, I blow at them a bit and then I just leave it. I think I left it overnight. You don't have to leave it that long, but I went away and I left it. And so when I came back hours or the next day later, um, I was sure it would be dry. And you can see that I've got all those little shapes. I decided to cut some letters for the word hello out of some cardstock. I tried a few colors there and I've got double tack mounting film from graphics on the back. I just cut it out of a few colors so I could work out what would look best and I ended up stacking the blue of the letters on top of the green so that it was slightly raised. This is the Concord and Ninth Simple Serif Alphabet dies and I love them. In fact, I really love any alphabet dies. I'm quite committed to them at the moment. I just used a piece of piece of post-it note, uh, post-it tape underneath to get them all lined up. And then the So Extra Supporting Sentiments from Paper Rose Studio. I punched it out, but then I ended up cutting it down even further for my finished card. Thanks for watching. I'm happy to be back with videos again and I look forward to bringing more to you in the future. Bye for now.